Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There is growing concern about South Africa's water supply situation. Natasha Woodendahl joins me to discuss recent developments. Hi. Hi. What is the current water supply situation? Well, at the moment it's actually worsening across South Africa. We are a water scarce country and we always will be. I mean, we are the 30th driest, at, well, last figures, 30th driest in the world. The problem that now comes in is we're actually having a little bit less rainfall and later in the year rainfall. Our predictions of rainfall aren't good at the moment. We might pick up a little bit later in the year, but at the moment we are struggling across all of our provinces. The Eastern Cape is in dire straits. The Northern Cape is in dire straits. A lot of the provinces should actually have been declared disaster areas a while ago already because some of them have actually run out of water. In Gauteng, we've also started implementing water restrictions of our own because our dam levels are actually quite low at the moment. We haven't had the rain we've needed um, as you know, comparatively like last year at this point in time. We haven't had the amount of rain that we usually have. We've also had hotter days across South Africa, um, which is leading to higher evaporation levels, which obviously in that case is obviously leading to less water for us. Um, climate change has become a big topic. Um, the problems that we're facing with climate change and obviously drier seasons. And along with all of this, including the climate change I just mentioned, I mean, it's, it's putting our food security at risk because we can't um, feed our agricultural um, industry enough water. There's a lot of um, jobs that are actually at risk because we just don't have enough water. And you know, it's, it's going to impact life quite considerably if we don't actually manage this situation well. How is government proposing to deal with the situation? Well, government is telling us not to panic at the moment, um, especially in Kauteng, where we have had warnings um, of lower levels of water. But we are still waiting for the National Water and Sanitation Master Plan, which was supposed to be released last month, but is supposed to be released now sometime in November. We're still waiting for that to actually see any concrete plans that the government has in place. But at the moment, the government is actually just urging us to use our water sparingly to you know, just reduce consumption across the board, just to make sure that we're not wasting any, any water that we may actually need. And you know, if we don't need to use it, don't. Um, in terms of infrastructure, we're still, as I said, we're still waiting on the um, government to actually put, put forth some plans. But I know that they are talking of certain projects that they wanted to do um, to try and obviously plug our leaks where we can. I mean, it's, it's a long-standing story. We need to plug all our leaks. We need to fix our infrastructure. We need to put in place new infrastructure. Um, all of that will still come out. Um, at the moment, we're not really sure of any concrete plans until that is actually released. What has the impact of drought conditions been on the farming community? It's actually been devastating on them. Um, at the moment, a recent, a recent um, press briefing held by AgriSA shows that the sector across the board is actually struggling badly. Financially, they can't get any loans at the moment because they're still in, in heavy debt. I mean, the four-year drought has put them in, in significant debt. Well, considering it's been so many years that they haven't had any reprieve um, through, the, through the drought at the moment, they're, they're struggling to recover from the previous ones. Um, I mean, we have a resilient farming community in South Africa. We always have. Um, but because the temperature, well, because our climate is getting drier with less rainfall, and it's more frequent that these episodes occur, um, the, the farmers are just not recovering. The news that came out of that press briefing, it, it is quite dire. I mean, from wildlife um, ranches through to horticulture, through to all, all of our, actually all of our farming communities, they're just not surviving. Um, Obviously, in addition to the financial constraints they have, I mean, they're, they're getting decreasing yields out of their crops. Um, there's less planting going on. It's just threatening our food security. I mean, at the moment, um, planting is, is a month late, and they have this week to actually get, get it in the ground, or, you know, we might face a little bit of shortages um, going forward because, I mean, the rainfalls are late at the moment. Um, and in, even in the first half of 2019, I mean, our real agricultural output was 9.2% lower than last year. I mean, even a third of our rural communities are being affected by this drought, and there are concerns that this can actually cause 
the collapse of our rural economy is if we don't get any, uh, any assistance immediately. And the farmers are actually needing financial assistance um, in particular to just try and just survive this current cycle and then they can start thinking about how they can adapt to climate change itself. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.